Hey everyone, this is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Brandon Brown. Brandon is doing some amazing work, so I'm excited to have him on to share a story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drcaseyjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. While you're on my site, be sure to check out the Shop tab where you can check out my first book of my Healthy Children's Book series. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Brandon Brown. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Brandon Brown. Brandon is extremely talented. He's an actor who has been featured on TV shows and commercials uh, for companies like Nike and Chase Bank, as well as a musician and oil painter. And I love the platform that Brandon has created from his plant-based advocacy to promoting his local art community. But I'm excited for Brandon to share his story and all of the amazing things that he's working on. So Brandon, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. No problem. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. And, uh, you know, before we dive into everything that you're working on right now, you know, let's start with your backstory. So first off, where you're from and just what your wellness has looked like growing up as a kid so we fully understand just how it's evolved over time. All right. Uh, I am originally from Buffalo, New York. Uh, I was one of eight children. Uh, My mother raised me, single mother household. And, uh, you know, growing up, it was definitely a lot of fast food. Uh, I remember pretty much going to eat McDonald's like daily because we couldn't afford a lot. But that was definitely about my daily diet. I remember when I was 14 years old, I got my first summer job and I was on a a strict McDonald's diet every day. I just ate the most unhealthiest things ever. I never really gained a lot of weight or I, I always felt like I was lacking something like I was anemic or I wasn't eating the right things. I was probably eating like cereal and just a bunch of unhealthy things. Uh, and then it was after I graduated college from Buffalo State College, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Then I moved to L.A. in 2014. And then living in L.A. is when I started finding out about veganism and plant based diets and things of that nature. I moved out here in L.A. to act. And, you know, as I'm doing my acting journey uh, in the beginning, you know, I'm only, you know, I'm buying what I can afford, you know, meats and, you know, cheap fast foods and stuff. But I remember watching, uh, you know, a documentary that changed my life and my perspective. And it was, you know, What the Health on Netflix. And it was uh, that documentary changed a lot of people's perspective. And I've seen food documentaries before, but it was something about that one that was that made me really disgusted in the meat industry and the things that are done uh, that we don't see to the meat and and I think that after I watched that video, I cleared my refrigerator out that same night and I was like done. I was like vegan after that. Well, actually, I was vegetarian at first because the only thing that I did eat was eggs. Then I remember a little while later, uh, it was something like, you know, basically saying how harmful the eggs were and and they were coming from the chicken. And if I'm not eating the chicken, then it's basically the same effect. So I had to do things in baby steps. You know, I was cutting out. Uh, meats first that I thought were the worst. And then I uh, like pork and beef. And then it was just chicken and turkey. And then I'm like, got rid of that. Then it was pescatarian, then got rid of that. Then I did the vegetarian thing with the eggs. And then I got rid of that. So um, jumping in full vegan, it was like, it was a little like process, but it's something that I did very quickly. I just knew that I couldn't eat meat and I couldn't eat dairy. I didn't know what I was supposed to eat like in substitution for it. 
So my diet in the beginning was very, you know, it was it was a plant based diet, but it wasn't. I probably wasn't eating, getting all the proper nutrients that I should. Like a junk food vegan type of thing. Yeah. 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 So do you feel like whenever you watch that documentary, do you think it was more on the animal side that really that drew you in or was it more on the health aspect? Like you were just trying to have more energy and just be healthier overall. Um, to be, to be honest, um, amongst the African American community, uh, we have a, we have a higher rate of, of like diabetes and cancerous, uh, effects based on the consumption that we eat because we have certain things that are in our diet like certain meats and stuff and and uh certain fast foods and stuff and i always wanted to prevent that i have uh family members that have had health issues and you know that are passing away in their like 50s and you know very or 40s even you know i had a i had a family member that passed away and he's like you know probably about 45 and you know it was related to health reasons and i just think that that's too young and so watching that documentary, it was mainly about me preventing something like that in the future. That's and awesome. And later on, it became about animals for me. That That's amazing. Yeah. Did, did you like, did you have good support when you decided to make that decision? Because like, it's not, obviously it's, it's growing in popularity and people are learning more about it, but it can be very difficult whenever you're like telling your family, your friends, like, Hey, I'm doing this because they're afraid that you're going to be malnutrition ha- or have malnutrition or, um, you know, family gatherings is typically all around food. Right. So it can be super difficult on a social level for people to do that. Like, was that a struggle for you around your family and friends at all? Um, luckily I have a family that will support me with whatever I do. They don't really know much. They're not vegan. They don't know much about it. But they've always supported me. But I've have I have had friends, you know, friends that are heavy meat eaters, and they're like, you know, I don't like the way this tastes as a vegan, or you, you know, you're not getting. The, you know, there'll be people that will try to come at you and make it look like you, you're not getting the proper nutrients if you go vegan. I remember my, I think last year was my because I I normally either choose to go home for like Christmas or Thanksgiving, and I normally go Christmas, but last year I went home for Thanksgiving. And, you know, my family, they knew I was vegan. I told them they didn't know much about vegan. They don't know anything about veganism, but I told them, you know, what to not put in foods and stuff like that. So they like uh, they were making food, trying to accommodate my needs. But everything they were like, hey, we got uh, greens right here for you. And it, but the greens have meat in it and stuff. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like and it was like, oh, we got sweet potatoes, but it had like butter and, and dairy. In it. And then it was like. I'm, I'm happy that I get to educate them on it. Um, but it was it, last Thanksgiving was a struggle because I wasn't able to eat anything. Like, I think I probably had like some vegetables <laughs> and broccoli. That was it, you know? Yeah. Holidays are tough. I, I've, I've mentioned a few times on the podcast. It's like, cause I get a lot of questions with how to like overcome when for the holidays and, and just, you know, dealing with that. But something that I've noticed just personally for myself and just, just talking to a bunch of people, um, just the more consistent you are. And once you get past that second, third holiday, mm-hmm. people start to become like more accepting and asking really great questions. Then you can start to kind of substitute things more, like bring your own dishes for people to try. It's like, once you get over the hump of that second, third holiday, like they know you're not just doing like a fad diet or just something that's right, you know right, trendy. Right. Like they're like, Oh man, they're really into this. So yeah, it could be hard, but if you're just consistent, people will people will come around and they'll ask really awesome questions. Mm-hmm. That's that's the fact. Yeah, and, and like, so what do you think your biggest obstacles were whenever you did make that switch? I know you said that you had to kind of learn what to eat. It was might have been kind of like junk food, veganish. Yeah. Like, did you miss something in particular? Or like, what was the hardest part for um, you? I don't think. Luckily, the documentary turned me off so much that I didn't necessarily miss meat. I was just like. I, I, like I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty disciplined person. Like I can start doing something. Like I remember a couple of years ago, I told, I was just like, I want, I got a New Year's resolution to never, to not drink alcohol for a year, and it wasn't for any reason. I just wanted to test myself, and I did it. And then a year came, and then it was like, oh, you can drink now. And then I'm like, nah, I just keep going with it. Like I just like to be disciplined. But yeah. as far as being vegan, it was very difficult because I'm like, all right, I can't eat meat, I can't eat dairy. What can I eat? Uh, can I eat this? And I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning of being vegan. Like I used to get, I used to go to the grocery store. I would see something that would be like 
it it would be like meatless meat. And I'm like, oh, okay, this it's not, it's uh, it's vegan. And then I remember like eating it and then looking at the back of the ingredients and it would be like made with like milk or eggs. And I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> even getting cereal. I used to get cereal sometimes. And then I used to, oh, okay, it's got to be vegan. It's not meat. And then it, I'll read like gelatin on the back. And I'm just yeah. like, wow. It, it just made me realize, I ne- first of all, I've never looked at ingredients for anything prior to becoming vegan, but it made me so aware because there's also paint thinner in ingredients. I just started Googling all the things. I mean, Insane. It, there's, there's paint thinner in cereal. Yep. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of things like these words, these big words that people don't know. Like try, if you Google it, it'll tell you what it is. And it's like in plain sight. They like word it that way because nobody's going to like really, you know, a lot of people don't do that. But this is the first time I started looking at ingredients. This is the first time I started actually um you know realizing like how much milk and egg is in everything like everything like you think you're getting bread like when i tell people like my family members they're like they're like oh you can eat some bread it's, it's, it's not no it's vegan you know and i'm like nope you got you got milk in it you got you got dairy in it you know it's mm-hmm. like it's in everything it is and it's like it's frustrating too you know right now it's like whenever you start to become more aware of those things you get super frustrated because people just don't know what they don't know and it's like a lot of this stuff is the stuff that is, is cheaper. So like families will buy it more or like, you know, that's what kids are eating mostly, right? Like cereals and things like that, that have the things like paint thinners. And it's sad. It's sad that that's what we're like trained to think that we're supposed to eat. And, you know, we're seeing all of these issues with kids younger and younger. And it's, it's extremely sad. You're, you're absolutely right about that. Yeah. And like, do you, do you have, I know you mentioned that documentary, but was there any other resources that were helpful for you that, you know, if somebody's listening, they're like, you know, I want to learn more about it or like, you know, advice you'd have even, but like resources and advice for somebody that's that's newer to this. Yeah, I think that what people need to do is because a lot of people want to be vegan, but they don't know. They, they're always asking, so what do I get now? I think that people just need to watch um, as many videos on it on YouTube as possible. And follow as many vegans as they can. If yeah, you're a vegan, you're probably you know fine. Because it's like we show the food at the restaurant, but people don't show what you have to buy in the grocery store to substitute. Like, okay, if you if you're missing the taste of beef, try this Beyond Beef. Try this Impossible Beef. If you're missing the taste of cheese, try this Follow Your Heart or Diet. It's like we gotta really. Um, I think I think I think that's a big thing for people because they're always asking me, "What do I buy instead?" Because I want to try this. But what do I get instead? What's the substitute that I can? Because I'm I'm letting them know it's a substitute for everything. If you like bacon, we got vegan bacon. It's a you know, of course, it's not going to be exactly the the same exact, but it'll be very close to the point that I don't miss it. And I think that's why. I also think your demographic location of where you are in this country is very important because right. I travel all over the country and the world, and I can't you wouldn't believe how many people have never heard of veganism, does don't know what it is. Or just think like it's vegetarian or don't have any options. And I'm the, I'm even talking about, you know, I've and I'm an actor. I work on set and they're like, oh, yeah, we got vegan. We got salad. And then the salad <laughs> is in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, how you mess that up? And then, right. like, and then it's like, even if it didn't have cheese, it's like, I don't just eat salads. Like I, I eat I eat a lot of food as vegan, you know? So that's another stereotype people have. They just think it's salad. They just think you're. You know, that's why I have a vegan page, Chlorophella, and or even on some time my personal. I don't um, I think that people are turned off in a way of like trying to shove. I take a different approach because there's many types of vegans. I take a different mm-hmm. approach in getting people to understand it. I don't want to force it down someone's throat or, or like or attack people who eat meat. But right. I want to show them, you know. Oh, look at this delicious thing that I'm eating right now. And can you believe it's vegan? And I feel like that approach has made so many people go like, wow, that's vegan. Where can I get it? Where's the restaurant? Boom, boom, boom. Or just like the way I, I am with animals. Sometimes I record an interaction I have with animals. It'll influence people rather than an aggressive approach because if you attack people, then they, they get defensive. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just always coming from a place of love and just living by example. It's really the best way to do it. And you were spot on earlier when you were talking about just ways to really increase your knowledge or like just learn more about it, just following the right people on Instagram, because it's just a lot of probably for most people, your main circle, that's not what they're going to. So using social media as a way to like increase your circle and learn more and just be influenced by that, because you're being influenced all the time by every time you turn something on the TV or you're scrolling through your, your feed, like, 
that can go with anything, right? If you're scrolling through and everything's negative, like you, you got to make some changes or, you know, if you're scrolling through and things are like plant-based and positive and, and things like that, like that is a good way. If that's where you're trying to go, like that makes a huge impact. Is there anybody right off that you can think of that was a positive Instagram influence for you as you were, as you were learning, especially? Um, yeah, I remember my beginning of my vegan journey. Um, me and my friend, we both were vegan and we, we were friends, but I think we became vegan at the same time. We didn't know it literally the same month. And we just found out months later on and we, I think we were eating and I was like, yeah, no, I'm vegan. I can't, he's like, I'm vegan too. And it was just like, so I had a friend to, to do vegan things with. That's why we started the page. And then, but I think that we didn't know much, but once we went to a, our first vegan street fair uh, in Los Angeles, then it's like this big like fair um, with all these vegan vendors and it's massive. They have it once a year and we went there, we recorded it. And then the owner of it, the creator, uh, this woman named Jess, uh, she runs the vegan street fair page and she started inviting us to events like taste testing to restaurants. And then we just started getting into this vegan community. So I would say her her page really uh, helped us a lot because we started meeting from that, just from making a video of like a vlog that we were there. We got invited to all this other stuff. We started um, meeting all these other vegans. And just last week, just this past weekend, I went to my first like vegan prom. You know, it's like so nice. <laughs> things that I didn't even know existed. And I'm like, it feels good to be a part of this like whole world of people that, you know, have the same beliefs as you. Yeah, no, that's incredible. I mean, how did it start to affect you, especially as you started to learn how to eat the right way and not just like the super processed things like did you notice anything right away as far as like your health and your energy and or even like creativity or did everything kind of stay the same which isn't a bad thing it just means like you know you're eating the right thing so did you notice any changes at all okay as far as physically go i'm about six six foot three inches 175 pounds surprisingly i've been the same weight for five years now um so (laughs) I don't, I don't think I won't, I can't say that like I lost a, a ton of weight or, or something like that from it. Um, I will say, because I've always been active athletic and I also don't eat, eat a lot of food, but I will say this playing basketball before running up and down the court. I always felt, even though I've been, I've always been slim. I always felt like I'm out of energy. I'm kind of tired inside. And I'm like, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, you know, I can't go for long. And it's not like I'm necessarily out of shape physically, but it's something internal. But now I, I feel like I have all this energy of like when I'm running up and down, it's like I have like an endless amount of energy and I know it's in turn. Even when I go on a hike now, I have all this energy. I think that it's important to know. I just found out like the past year of things that I didn't know, like that I that I that I need to take like vitamins like iron and D3 and uh, B12. But it's like it's all of these vitamins that, you know, I think we need to consume as vegans because. I don't know if meat has this stuff in it, but, you know, supposedly it does. But it's like stuff that I was lacking. When you, when you do a change in diet, it definitely diet it definitely has an effect on internally and physically. So I think that you have to make up with it by uh, taking the proper things that you may have been getting from certain things that you were eating before. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that could go for... Um really any diet, you know, because like whenever we look at just like soil depletion and how much we're killing the soil with different pesticides and stuff, like it it takes more food now to get the nutrient density that it took, you know, for our grandparents just because we're destroying the soil every day. So, I mean, that could go for any diet, but yeah, no supplementation is super important. And um, for anybody really just having like yearly blood work can be super helpful with that just to make sure you're on the right track. But no, that's a, that's a super, super good point. And uh, yeah, and to, to kind of switch it up a little bit, Brandon, but um, I want to talk about your acting a little bit. You know what first got you into that or what sparked the idea of just going that route? The the acting thing was definitely very, it's like I moved to LA and I knew I, I wanted to be an actor or I wanted to be on TV, but I didn't know how it was, how was going to happen. I remember working at a movie theater when I came out here and then uh, this guy came in, he said he was an agent and... Um, I went to the agency. I got kind of signed and I never went on an audition before. I didn't have an acting background, but, you know, I just started going on auditions and, you know, I was getting a lot of like callbacks and stuff like that, but I wasn't booking anything for like six months. And then, you know, my agent was like, Hey, you need acting classes. And so I was like, okay, I do those acting classes. And when I took those acting classes, like it like took off for me because everything that I knew I had the energy, I know I had the personality. 
I knew I had improvisation, um, but it was something, it was just, it was small things that I just didn't know because I didn't have a background in, in acting. I didn't know what not to do and like mechanic, mechanical stuff. And, and then that helped me so much. And then after I took the acting class, I started just booking all these commercials. Uh, you know, I was in a Nike commercial with LeBron, like as a younger LeBron James, I was in a Taco Bell commercial, national commercials. I was in, uh, recently Chase Bank commercial. I've been in a Kelly Blue Book commercial. I, like I've done like, like probably about a hundred commercials by this point. That's awesome. I've seen the Chase Bank one. You did great, by the way. <laughs> yeah. What was it like seeing yourself on a commercial for the first time? Was it crazy? Yeah. Uh, let me see. The first time I see myself like on TV, it was like, I want to say my first national was like the Nike one. Yeah. And, and that's a big deal. I mean, playing LeBron. I mean, that's because, you know, it's cool because you like, you know, you know, he saw it. Right. So yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. I was like, hey, Le- yeah, I know LeBron. He don't know me, but he, he saw it, <laughs> you know. They shot his part of dip in like in Ohio or something on like a green thing or something, but like they combined it with the commercial. But it was definitely, it was definitely, it was a blessing. You know, I kept getting all these calls and texts, and it was like amazing. It was like this awesome thing. It's definitely an amazing feeling. Like after a while, at this point right now, I've been doing it for about five years, five, five years, five and a half years now. So it's still a blessing. I guess it depends on the campaign that when I'm like really excited about it because mm-hmm. I, you know. Because there's so many deals with commercial stuff. Because I I know like if I if you book like a national commercial and it's on TV, the more that it airs, the more you get paid. But right. now the way that things are changing with contracts and stuff, it's like they'll like give you like a, a smaller buyout, and even though it's running nonstop day in and day out, you know you're not getting paid like residuals for it like you used to and stuff like that. And it's like all this stuff the way it's changing. That's why that's the only thing that may alter me being. Uh, as excited and stuff for it. And another, another thing being an actor, you go like, and being vegan, this is, the, it's, 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 it's difficult at times because sometimes you have to state your dietary restrictions. And if you say that you're vegan in an audition, you know, they're, 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 they're open to it, but they'll probably won't catch you. They're, they'll easily, even if that's not the spot. I remember I did a Taco Bell commercial and I didn't have to eat any meat, but I could have been in that position. And the woman, it was only me and one girl, and she had to eat all the food. And I just came in and <laughs> her eating my food, which I was so thankful for because I was like, I was trying to put morals and finances in the same, you know, yeah. I was trying to balance it on a scale. Like, because I got like, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars for that commercial. So I was like, I tried to be like, wow, do I do this or do I, you know? And I'm like, I didn't have to, but I thought about what I had to do in that. And I've gone to auditions in the past and after that, and they're like, are you vegan? And I don't tell them that at first. I wait to see what the scenario is. But, you know, they have spit buckets and stuff where they're like, oh, you can just you can just bite it. You can just eat the meat and just spit it out after the take and stuff. So it's like it's it's a daily struggle to say, hey, will you eat this product, this animal product for the commercial and get all this money from it? Or will you say no because you're vegan? And it's like, you, you, that's, a, that's something that I know a bunch of vegan actors struggle with. It's hard. It, I mean, it's hard when you start to mention like numbers and stuff like that. And just like, that's your way of making a living. So it's very difficult. It's interesting. I, um, I had this girl on once and, and she's also, uh, she's an actress and her take on it was she chooses not to turn down non-vegan type roles because in her mind, if she is getting paid for that, she can use that money to make more awareness on the cause as, as opposed to somebody who isn't vegan using the money to not do that. So for her, that was her take. And I get everybody has different takes and views and you have to do what morally feels right to you. But no, that's, that's a hard, that's hard. That would be very, very hard um, decision to make for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I try not to, if I'm going to do something like that, I, I haven't been in that situation, but I know it. I know it'll come in the future because you know I'm, I'm always auditioning for things like Burger King and McDonald's and stuff like that. And they're always asking, "You must be willing to eat the product." I haven't booked a spot like that where I had to. I've been in fast food commercials, but I didn't have to eat anything. So you know, it's a, it's a question that will arise. All I'll say it is, if I do something, then I'll make it worth it. I I, I turned down one job where they wanted me to. It was a smaller job, and it was like. $300 and they wanted me to eat a beef burger and stuff like that. And I was like, I didn't think it was worth it. So I didn't do it just yeah. off of my dietary restrictions. 
Yeah. It, well, at least now, though, with like all of the fast food um, chains introducing things like Beyond Meat and adding all of these vegan options, that might help a lot because, you know, if you do audition for, let's say, like Burger King, McDonald's, you could be like, OK, can we just swap it for a Beyond Burger, you know? Right. That would be ideal. That would really be ideal. And I always think that, too. But they have this whole you'd be surprised. They have this whole like set decorator making the burger because you watch the <laughs> commercials and it looks all perfect. Uh-huh. They have everything is like very done very tediously and meticulously, like making the, the, the pickle or like frying the bun a certain way and all this stuff. So they, they, I think that they really like their idea of how their stuff looks and they put all this effort and I'm just like wishing that they could just swap it for a veg- veggie burger. Right. <laughs> I feel like if you're a big enough name, they'll make that exception for you. Like, yeah, for sure. There's vegan, there's vegan actors, and, and when they do movies, if they have to eat some meat or something, they they're definitely making sure that's vegan on their sandwich. But if you're a smaller name, they're like, hey, take it or leave it. Yeah, no, that's that would be hard. That would definitely be difficult. And I mean, like, it's and you know, you do act, you do. I mentioned in the intro, you know, you are uh, a painter and very talented. And I definitely recommend everybody listening to go. Follow him on Instagram. Check out his work because it's, I mean, it's incredible. And, and I'm excited to, to support your um, artwork as well, Brandon. But um, how have you noticed, well, first off, you know, when did you first realize that you could paint? And then how is just, just increasing art in your life? Like, how has it affected everything from just energy, your thoughts, mindset? Because I know like art can have a huge effect on that. But um, what's that effect been like for you? Um, art affected me. I actually just started painting like six months ago. You just realized you could paint just out of the blue? <laughs> no, you know, it was crazy. I was walking down someplace in Beverly Hills, right? And I, or these, mm-hmm. or like historical museums. It wasn't like modern day. It was very like Mona Lisa esque. And I was like, wow, I want to learn how to paint like that. And I walked in there and met the teacher, and, and you know, and she told her what I do. And she told me I could take paint classes there. And um, she taught me how to paint for six months. That's and, amazing. You know, and I never drew or painted in my life. You know, I had art class. I probably was scribbled. No effort whatsoever. Terrible, you know. And, but once she taught me the simple technique of it, it was like, no. She told me to draw something. I drew it. It was terrible. And she said, <laughs> no, stop drawing what you think that an eye looks like or what you think that something looks like and just draw what's in front of you. Draw this picture. Draw it exactly how it is. Because a lot of people, and I think that's like when people use in different parts of their brain. Cause they like have a, a ter- like they have a perception of what something is supposed to look like, rather than just literally drawing what is in front of you and the shape that it is. Like when people start drawing faces and stuff, or just doodling, they start just imagining what they think instead of something that's realistically like a if they have a picture of it, and and doing it very tediously and slowly. And the, the first picture I drew was terrible, and the second was like you would have thought I was drawing for years, but it was just something that shifted of me, of her actually just making me aware of it. And so when I started painting, she taught me this basic technique. And I, I thought that this was something that you had to be born with. I'm like, you know, I, I don't know how to paint or draw. So I thought it was like singing or something, but it's like, oh, wow, I can be taught how to paint and, and I can paint. And it's like, and I'm getting better every day, but it's like, it's like, you know, I feel like this is something it's, we have like this greatness inside of all of us that is there. We just need somebody to unlock it or we just need somebody to like make us aware of it. Now, that's amazing. And that's a great point to make because, you know, in my mind, I think like I I can't paint, but I mean, that's super encouraging when you're, <laughs> yeah. you know, just saying like it, basically anybody can really learn it. It's just certain techniques. That's that's cool. That's amazing. Well, I mean, your work's awesome. I, I love like watching your like um, time lapse videos of your paintings. Um, the one with Nipsey is amazing. I can't wait to order the print, which I definitely am and excited for that. Um uh, yeah, no, it's 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 super Thanks. amazing, and uh, and I really I love the way that you're using your platform as a whole. Um, it's just super positive, just energy all around. You know, as far as your platform, like, what do you hope to accomplish with your platform? Like, do you want to inspire others, or is yeah, it to create change or inspiration? Like, I almost thought I put it in my capture and like and put it in my bio. Like, I'm just here to inspire people. Like, I do a variation of things, right? I'm heavily inspired. I'm a Gemini. I don't know if it's uh, like something because of that, but I'm just heavily inspired and I always want to learn how to do things. So I just want to just like inspire people to know, like I didn't move to LA with any money. I don't come from a money family with like all these resources. And I like, I always wanted to do all these things. And then once I, the more I started like 
making myself knowledgeable of things, doing research or just like my drive in general. I told myself everything that I wanted to do as a kid that I couldn't necessarily afford to do or have the resources to do. I wanted to do it when I got older. You know, I'm I'm always constantly doing something else. So I don't just get put in one category of just like I'm an actor, but I also have different aspirations. But I just want to inspire people like anything. Like I have friends. I went to Cuba a, a couple months ago and I had and I was just I had one with a group of people and I was the only vegan. And I didn't I didn't say anything about anybody eating meat. Like I'm I can I can eat my meal and I don't and not be affected by the people who eat their stuff around me. But I had a friend there, a, a guy that I actually met, actually he wasn't even a friend, but he was just so like inspired by my discipline to not eat whatever they were eating. And he just was like, Okay, um, I think I'm gonna order what he's ordering, you know, like and he nice. was just like, you know, I was just inspired by that. And I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't force it on his though. I didn't judge him for doing it. He was just inspired by it. And then when we got back, you know, every day now he's like, Look what I just bought from the grocery store. <laughs> That's awesome. This and that. And I was just like, I really admire that because I'm like, you never know the influence you may have on someone. So that's all I want to do is inspire people to and whatever I, and whatever I do, let them know that you're capable of doing it. Absolutely, no, I love that, and you're definitely doing an amazing job at that. And you know, what do you have, uh, you know, planned for the future? I know you've had a few commercial lined up as of lately, and you've been doing a lot with your artwork. Is there anything else that you're working on that you just want to put out there and share? Um, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm constantly auditioning. Uh, I've shot a lot of stuff in the past. Thing about film, it takes a long time to come out. So when I'm even whether I'm shooting commercial, like I shot the chase thing like three months ago and it like came out in June. And so it's like things take a, a while to come out. So and then hopefully they come out because sometimes they don't. I've been in that situation before. Um, but I'm always working on something. I'm always. Oh, as far as artwork goes, what I'm currently doing is I'm currently painting a bunch of stuff because I want to have my first exhibition. Nice. Nice. Is that going to that, that would be in L.A.? Yeah, in L.A. Yep. I always wanted to have like a, and I go to them all the time and I buy and support other people's art. And I just always wanted to have one of my own. I'm not saying that I'm big. I'm going to do this all the time and forever, but I would say one time in my life and I, hopefully I can accomplish this goal by towards the end of this year. I just want to have a, a plethora. I mean, like, I want to have a, like a large amount of work. And once I do that, that's, that's an upcoming goal. I'm, I'm working to, to, to achieve that right now. That's as awesome. Well as, you know, writing scripts and stuff like that. One day soon, I want to have a vegan uh, food truck. Very uh, cool. I just got all these ambitions because I'm from Buffalo, New York. And when I go back home, there's still, I could tell that it's something sparked, but it's still not there. Like there's like, there's like probably like one or two vegan restaurants, like all of a sudden, but it's still not. And LA is like every corner. Like that's, right. that's, that's why it's so easy to be vegan in LA. And so I want to kind of do something to where I can bring it back to where I'm from because it's still not big over there. It's kind of like in behind time. So if you can, if I can do something where I can start a vegan business over there, it'll be because vegan is the future. I invest in stocks, right? Beyond yep. Meat is like- Oh my, Beyond Meat's been, I mean, since it went public, like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's been insane. It's inc- It's like today, it's like over $200, like at least <laughs> $200. That's so crazy. Yeah, and it's, like, amazing. it's like, if, if people would invest in it's like, a month and a half ago, it mm-hmm. was like sixty dollars. Yep. You get the profit from all of that stuff. So it's like I'm telling you, it's like vegan is the future. I don't want to. People think currently in the now, but I'm thinking five, ten years from now. I'm thinking, okay, you don't see this now, but just watch all these restaurants, all these all these restaurants. They got their vegan options now. It's going to be a point where I really think it's going to be a point where a majority of people will be vegan in like the next like fifty years. Absolutely. And you can tell, I mean, because you see all of these companies and not even food. You look at um, the fashion industry, you look at different clothing brands. Uh, it's cool. It's, it, I mean, just seeing it spark so much, it's uh, it's very cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to watch your journey, Brandon. And I'm excited for people to go, uh, you know, follow you and follow your, you know, your artwork. And I don't think, I don't know if you do, um, do you have like a, a highlight tab on your Instagram where you share p- other artists that you support? Um, I don't have anything where I share other artists. I may post on time to time on my on story. Your, like, Instagram story. Gotcha. But, um, I gotcha. As far as my stuff, I like made like a little tab, just like anything that I feel like I can creatively do. I made like a little talents tab, but I'm, uh, I'm constantly sharing. I have a friend, his name is, he actually inspired me to paint too. 
Uh, his name is Calvin Clausel Jr. It's C-A-L-V-I-N-C-L-A-U-S-E-L-L-J-R. He's an amazing painter. Like, I remember he's an actor too. And I seen his work years ago. He actually stopped painting, but I just thought it was an amazing trait to have. And and I kind of got him inspired to paint more. And then after Nipsey's death, he painted, I painted Nipsey, he painted Nipsey. And then it was like, oh, wow, I'm back at it. I'm back doing what I love. And he's like incredible. I can see that's amazing because you even got. I think um, I think I saw on your on your feed like your your paintings gotten like different exposure, right? Didn't you went over to like was it the game? Yeah, the rap that had you over. Like, what was that like? Because I'm sure being a new painter and you're just like, man, this is really cool. Yeah, we had uh, me and my friend Calvin actually. We had like just you know we when we post our paintings, we like tag all these like outlets or or. these people and use hashtag and stuff. And like he had messaged us and he wanted us, he, he really like he, cause he and him and Nipsey were friends and he's, he's been colored. I went and he invited us to come to his house and bring our artwork and stuff. And he had all these like other Nipsey paintings. And it was like, he was really impressed by our work. And I was like, wow, like I'm, I'm blown away because I haven't been doing this. My friends been doing it for a while, but I haven't. And so I was just appreciative of the fact that he admired it. And I didn't necessarily, um, you know, he he wanted to support our work and stuff, but I I wanted to save it for like the physical for like an actual exhibition, and then I'll let it go. But I just want to have a a body of work. But I appreciated the fact that he even you know took the time out. He said you know let me take some pictures with y'all, let me support your art, put it on his Instagram, and I was just going away. That's so cool. No, I love that, and I mean all of your work that that you're doing is incredible. And like I said, I'm super excited to see everything that you do in the future and. You know, what is the best way for people to follow you on Instagram or on social media and just support you, support, you know, your artwork and everything else that you're doing? OK, uh, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Brandon Brown B. Uh, I'm not on Twitter or anything like that. Uh, I have a Facebook, Brandon B. Brown, but I think that I don't use Snapchat or anything. My number one source is uh, Instagram and you can follow me. You know, uh, I do the variation of things and hopefully I can inspire you. Hopefully you can inspire me just by anything. Hopefully uh, we can connect. If you have any questions about acting or veganism, I'm always down to answer any questions as much as I can. Awesome. I love it. And then Brandon, just a closing question that I ask every guest, but if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's something that's been your biggest takeaway on, you know, your wellness or just a uh, personal journey so far. But if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? Never let success get to your head and never let failure get to your heart. Love it. No, that's amazing. That's perfect, Brandon. And just thank you so much for taking time to come on. I loved having you and excited to see all of the awesome work that you do. So thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And if you're ever in LA, feel free to hit me up, connect and I can show you around the vegan world here. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Brandon. He's doing so much positive work, so be sure to give him a follow on social media to keep up with everything that he's been working on. You can find his social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Brandon's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Brandon, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action.